Yo, what's good? Big Z here, and in this video, I'm gonna show you six things I learned while remaking the beat of Industry Baby by Lil Nas X. Make sure to stick around for the last tip because it's something I've never really thought of before and it's pretty cool. But anyway, the first thing to take away from this beat is that using a lot of layers is okay as long as they serve the same purpose. The goal of this main melody is to sound like a marching band with like 50 people in the marching band to make it sound nice and big. So how else are you gonna create that effect without using a ton of different layers? So I've actually bounced all the layers I use to audio, and here are all the brass layers I use for that main melody here. I hear a ton of demos of electronic tracks that just have too many layers, and as a listener, it's just too crowded. I don't know what to focus on. But the problem with those tracks is that the different layers have different rhythms and melodies. In this track, all of these layers are serving the same purpose. If you have one really strong melody in your track, why not layer it up and make it sound huge so people will remember it and it'll have a bigger impact. I'm pretty sure the producers of this original beat used a real trombone to record this brass section and just stacked a bunch of layers, but I recreated it using a bunch of contact horns. So we've got some layers that are higher in pitch, some that are lower, and some in between. So all those different octaves stack together to make one really big sound. I think I used like 17 layers total just for the brass. Then because I had so many different layers, I wanted to glue everything together and make it sound more cohesive. So that's why I bounced all those layers to audio right here. And then I added some processing. I added a little bit of OTT, then some compression on there, then OEK Sound Soothe to get rid of some resonant frequencies, then Fab Filter Saturn for some saturation, and then some EQ, and then a little more EQ right there, and then a little bit of reverb I have on a bus here. So without those effects, it sounds like this. Then with the effects. The second thing I learned from this beat is that you can really use harmonies to beef up a main melody. Listen to this brass without the harmonies in there. And now with these harmony layers in there. I'm sure there are other harmonies that I couldn't pick out when I was listening to the instrumental, but that's the whole point of harmonies. They're just there to add dimension to the main melody you're not really supposed to hear them on their own. Here's what one of the main melody layers sounds like stacked with one of those harmony layers so you can get a better idea of what they sound like together. The third tip I have is how to beef up an 808 so it sounds good on phone and laptop speakers. So this is just a basic 808 I got from a Boy Wanda sample pack on Splice, but to make it really come through on smaller speakers like phone speakers and laptop speakers, the trick is saturation. Here's what the 808 sounds like without saturation, and now with saturation. You can see I'm really saturating these bands between like 100 and 350 hertz and even more between 350 and like 2000 hertz. And that mid range is where you really hear it on those phone speakers. The fourth thing this beat reminded me of is to leave space in the mix to create rhythm and groove. Listen to the hi-hats and percussion here. There's a good amount of empty space in there that really helps the beat groove. If that hi-hat was just playing an eighth note every time throughout the whole beat, it wouldn't be nearly as cool. The same technique is being applied to the 808. There's a lot of empty space in between the 808 notes.
And it really helps the beat hit so much harder because the 808 is only being used at certain points for emphasis. If you just hear the 808 blasting the whole time, it's just gonna sound like a wall of sound and there's no contrast to create that hard hitting beat. And you should apply this to whatever type of electronic music you make too. You don't need the bass to be playing at every possible moment throughout the drop. You want the empty space in there to free up the mix and create some groove. All right, now on to the fifth thing. This is a really cool trick, and it's how to use gain automation to make your melodies sound a lot more professional. So I'm sending the lead melody to this bus, and I'm adding gain automation right on the bus. So here's what it sounds like without the gain automation. Now with the gain automation. You can emphasize the beginning of certain notes by having the gain go up really fast so it creates more of a transient sound because these horns weren't really hitting hard enough. And then if there are any long tails that sound muddier, you can reduce them like I've done here. That way those tails don't sound washed out, they sound really clean and tight. Now the sixth and final thing I learned while remaking this beat I think is some kind of crazy subconscious producer trick that I've never really noticed before. I was listening to the track really closely in my studio headphones so I could hear everything pretty clearly, and I swear I can hear a whistle sound on top of the main brass melody that's playing the same notes. It's just a whistle. It's really tucked back into everything else, so it's hard to hear when the whole melody is playing. But I'm convinced this is a subconscious trick by the producers of this track to get you walking away from the song, whistling the lead melody in your head. I'm definitely gonna try this out in one of my own tracks when I have a strong enough melody to emphasize. Anyway, this track is clearly a hit. It has over a half a billion streams on Spotify. There's always something cool to learn from these massive hits. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Peace.